one, if no one minds, um, call to order the um, Wednesday, June 8th, 2022 meeting of the Gig Harbor Arts Commission at 10.03 a.m. Uh, call it 10.04. Um, first item of business is our roll call. Um, and I will just call your names as I see you. And you can say here or peace on earth or whatever. <laughs> uh, Charlie Glock Jackson chair. Uh, Robin Avni co-chair. Here. Sonia Johnson. Here. Um, Dan Bosich. Here. And Lynn Stevenson from New York. I think you're muted, Lynn. Can't hear you. Now we can see you, but we can't hear you now. There. Okay. Um, okay. Can you hear? Can you hear me now? Yeah. It mm -hmm. was these. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm I'm tuning in from the Jersey Shore. Oh, Ooh, where nice. on the Jersey Shore? I'm in Stone Harbor. Oh, my old stomping grounds, the Jersey sure. Shore. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How cool is that? Really great. And, and we'll hear about that in a minute, I'm sure. <laughs> um, and also um, welcome uh, City Clerk Josh Stecker and um, um, Colette Smith, sorry. You look like the mayor, I'm sorry. <laughs> she does. This has been a morning. Um, my keyboard on my computer suddenly has decided not to work. So um, I'm having to do a very awkward workaround. Um, but that's neither here nor there. We'll just, uh, we'll get through it. Uh, we might have a guest later today. Josh, if you would keep an eye open, please, for um, Jennifer Gabe from the Gig Harbor Band Boosters, Gig Harbor High School Band Boosters. She may or may not pop in. Okay. Um, okay, so our first item of business then is to uh, approve, read and approve the minutes of our last Arts Commission meeting, which was held on Wednesday, May 11th. Uh, I trust everyone has read the minutes and are there any changes or corrections? All right, uh, good job, Josh. So may I please have a motion to approve? A motion to approve the minutes. And I second. Okay, there we go. Um, all in favor? Aye, aye, aye. aye. And no, no opposed and no abstentions. Thank you very much. Um, now, our next, our first order of discussion is um, to review the um, draft call for art for the Harborview Stinson Roundabout. And I think Josh sent everyone the um, um, draft of it. Did, Josh, did you send everybody the draft? Yep, should be in the packet that everyone got. It's online for the public too. Right. Okay, great. Right up on the screen, see so everyone can see it. Okay, um, so any any comments on it? You'll see that there are a lot of things that are um, just blanks, and that's because <laughs> we haven't decided those yet. Charlie, can you can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, I just the, the kind of the one thing that came up for me was just reviewing the bud the project budget because wasn't the original budget from the city like fifteen thousand? Yes. And then we added uh, ten thousand from our own, right? Yes. Yes, that's that's my recollection. Mm, okay. Well, yeah, Jim. Totally yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought when we did. <clears throat> something this is Robin something similar before that we didn't say like project budget 25,000 that we said we gave a recommended um cost for or bid or I forget what the term was we used maybe Josh you remember but instead too because then 
you know, maybe somebody will come in at 21,000, you know, um, um, so I don't know if what we need to say is something different, um, you know, um, costs, costs not to exceed. Uh, oh, a, that's an idea. Or ma maximum 25,000 or 25,000 max. Does that say, um, Do you have any suggestions on that one? <clears throat> Mm. I, I haven't gone through this mm. process before with a capital um, call for arts for capital projects, um, but yeah, we can word that as not to exceed 25,000. I think that's standard language for something like yeah. that. Yeah, so let's do not to exceed or uh, um, proposal not to exceed. Yeah. Good, good idea. Okay. Thank you, Robin. Any other uh, discussion? As far as the timing of this application, how long do you all feel that we should keep this application open, posted for? Um, the, the timing of the project is probably really going to be up to the engineering department and when they want to have it, the installation done. So we'll need to work backwards from, from their timeline. But mm -hmm. I guess the question is, how long should it be since from the time we post this initially on the website and start looking for artists before we actually close it and start making our decisions. I think the longer the better. Yeah, I'd say at least, well, let's see, if we want to install in fall, I'd say that we should do at least two months. At that least. would be my. Right, bring it into August. Yeah. Well, it's already into June. This will go out late June, probably, right? So like late August, maybe yeah. even even into early September. Well, yeah, we could say September 1st. I don't know. I have to look at the calendar. September. Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, September 1st is a Thursday. Why don't we do after Labor Day? So is Labor Day? Would be the 5th. The 5th. Um, so why don't we do so September 6th or 7th? Let's try to bump it up a little earlier than that because you guys have a meeting on, well, I guess the 14th is your meeting, right? September 14th. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's have it closed so that we just have enough time to get it to you before your meeting. Okay, so great. September would be fine. September 7th, I think. Great. Yeah, we just, that's, that's probably the best way to time it. And I can check with engineering and make sure that works with their schedule. Right. But, um, not not to be devil's advocate, but to sort of be devil's advocate, <laughs> then um, uh, that is going to put us into rainy season. And this is an outdoor yeah. project. And I'm not, <laughs> cert I'm not sure that it's uh, fair of us to be um, expecting an artist to be on their hands and knees <laughs> in, the, in the rain, but... Um, well, there's no guarantee that uh, August yeah. will be not be rainy the way the weather's been going. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, I'm, but, um, I'm, yeah. But I hear you. Well, we could do it. Um... Well, it's flexible. I think the day installation date can have some flexibility to it. Oh, I'm sure it can. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I think that any sooner than that. We're not, we need time to get some applications. So, Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I see your point, but as Lynn said, it is flexible. So, uh, and they're going to have to have a couple, we probably won't get installed till spring anyway by the time they complete it and, or we approve it, the council approves it, right? Doesn't right. have to go to council after that. So then that's mm -hmm. the holidays. And then after the holidays, so, you know, we'll probably be into spring anyway. So. Okay, well, then we this need to may change. Not need to go to council. Um, oh, okay. Already They've already budgeted for it and it's under our authority. So oh, okay. All right. Well, then take a look at that. I'm not sure if council may want to know what's going in there, but we'll, we'll have that conversation. Yeah. And so then we need to change the installation date from fall of 2022 to uh, what, spring 2023? Well, no, we don't know. I think we should just leave it as late fall or just fall 2022 and then see where we end up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not unusual for something to be delayed. Um, 
But um, I think the, we should make the award notification date um, September 2022, because we'll probably review on our September meeting. <coughs> Is that correct, Josh? Is that? I think that's a good target. Yeah, and review and selection <laughs> September 2022. But do we have to give a specific date? Do we have to be that specific, Josh? I don't <laughs> think so. Okay. I don't think we can be with the city's schedule. Like, they, you know, we don't know if it will for sure be done yeah. by then, right? Hey, uh, for I was just wondering if for Sonia and Colette, um, should we give a brief overview of this project? Um, that's, I, that's probably a good idea. I'm not I think sure. Aaron, I think Aaron did that at the last meeting when we were here. Did, did we not cover that or? Well, we did talk a little bit about the fact it's going to be, you know, sidewalk and we were talking about being level and ADA compliant and all that. Mm -hmm. So I, we did kind of go over mm -hmm. the basic uh, okay. format where the art is going to be. Yeah, it's um, a 10 foot section and there's a whole lot of rules because it's going to be something that is part of the sidewalk. Right. And, and oh, I think we actually, the Arts Commission got as far as which shows up in this proposal as um, dictating a marine theme quality to it. Right. Um, yeah. But that was, yeah, that was before we got the new commissioners. Right. And, and I can, this is kind of a, a digression if I may, but we also have some samples of, Lynn, you sent some examples of things that you thought might be um, yeah. thought, thought promoters and um, yeah. I saw pictures of huh. an art quilt, a glass um, installation in, on Bainbridge Island. So, and and um, Jeff Langhelm had also given us some samples that he'd seen of art that's inlaid in a sidewalk. So um, we can we can send I'll send those out again after this meeting so that everybody can be, um, I would try to do it now, but without a keyboard, I'm, <laughs> I'm extremely clumsy. Um, so um, yeah, we had, and, and yeah, okay. So my digression okay. is done. Yeah. So I just wanted to be sure that the new commissioners were kind of caught up in you know understanding the vision. Right. Yeah, I think we hadn't talked about the subject matter, but I, I took a look at the proposal or at this project description before the meeting and saw the, the marine theme and the, the listing mm -hmm. and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer isn't here, but those, um, uh, J Jennifer, for those who are new, um, Commissioner um, Jennifer used to work at um, Harbor Wild Watch and she is a sort of a botanical illustrator. So she's very familiar with the kinds of critters that one might encounter um, if one were um, scuba driving or something like that out in our bay. And she compiled this list of um, the critters that one would be likely to encounter. This last section on here, the sidewalk art requirements. Um, this is just a placeholder. I've already reached out to Aaron to, to see if he can give me some more concrete technical stuff to put in there. Um, so I'm not- RRR concrete. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah. Yes, concrete, yeah. <laughs> so okay. uh, this section will probably change, but this I'm gonna leave this up to Aaron to let us know what needs to be in there. Okay. And I'm sure that once we get this application posted, that we'll, we'll probably will get questions from artists on what mm -hmm. exactly technically they can work with. So right. hopefully right. we can be responsive to that. Thank you for Josh, because I promised um, Jeff that we would keep him posted as we develop this proposal. So thanks for being in touch mm -hmm. with uh, Public Works for us. Any other discussion? Do, would going through it kind of step by step be helpful to us or is everyone familiar enough that 
I, I don't think I don't think we need to do that. Okay. Um, that's my two cents. But if somebody okay. else feels the need, I'm. I'm yeah, just, I, okay. I don't think so. I, I as I said, I read through it, and I, I think it's pretty clear. Okay. We just need to fill in some dates then. Right. So I think I have what I need then. I will take this application and I'll work with Aaron and we will thought, fill in the blanks and get it ready to go. Okay. And um, I don't think we'll need to bring it back to the Arts Commission. We'll have everything we need to get it posted and then we should have applicants for you by your September meeting. Possibly run into any, any issues. Great. Okay, thank you, Josh. Sounds good. Um, do we see the applications before the meeting or to then talk about them or will we see them yeah, the first time at the meeting? If we close it on September 7th, I should be able to turn those around to you all right, you know, right at the, right at the closing date. Um, I'll probably want to vet them as they come in with engineering just to make sure that there are any proposals that we get are something we can actually approve first. So they're they'll probably all be vetted through public work staff and engineering staff before they come to you. But, but yeah, we'll get them to you uh, at least several wow. days before the meeting. So you have time to get into them. Okay. Are we giving public works enough time with a week then? Uh, I think so. I don't, I'll talk to Aaron okay. about it and see what he thinks. Um, I don't know how complicated these are going to be for them to review. So we'll see. Okay. Hmm. Um, I'd like to just say if if an artist comes back with something that seems too complicated through the public works parameters, maybe maybe we can give the artist a chance to re, you know, yeah. yeah. That, that will be the goal, yeah. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Good, good points, everybody. Um, is there any other discussion on on our um, application form then? Call call for art form. Great, and I'll remember to send out samples of things that we've seen, th things that we older commissioners have looked at in the past that could be sort of inspiring uh, ideas for prospective artists. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and you can see if you've been downtown through that infamous roundabout that's now open for two-way traffic, <laughs> Um, you can see where our section of sidewalk is, that where this art is going to go. Because oh. all the other sidewalk is concrete and there's a 10 foot Ooh, cool. black like asphalt space. Oh, yes. Ooh, um, we need to include a photo of that with the application. Yeah. Okay, I, I, have, I, I have to go down there one day this week so I can take a photo. Great, great. Yeah. Um, they were just in, they're just installing the landscaping. In yeah. That area. yeah, which looks, well, I saw four trees and that looked nice, but I don't, you know, I must, I know that there were some um, good landscaping plans, like just for the, for the, uh, the boathouse um, similar. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited about that. I think it'll look really pretty. Me too. It's going to be a real prominent location. And it will be a real um, conversation starter, I think, when that long, wide, expensive sidewalk, and then to suddenly come to this art in the middle of the sidewalk. And it's probably going to be, um, um, people will be stopping and paying attention and hopefully trying to identify the, 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 the things that are in the artwork. Oh, Josh, we'll also need to, in the future, once this is done, we'll need to think about some kind of, somewhere to put a, a little plaque that identifies the artist. So if there's going to be a like a big rock somewhere in that area, maybe we could affix the plaque to the rock or on a little pedestal, tiny pedestal or something. But that's yeah. a good idea with the like the name of the of the work of art and the date it was installed. I, I think that's nice. And the artist, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I'll bring that up with Aaron. That, that may be something that needs to be embedded in the installation because we're dealing with a sidewalk and we don't want any unevenness. And I, yeah. yeah, even if it's off the sidewalk and the landscaping, I'm not sure how Aaron will all the answer to that. Yeah. Well, it's it's 
typical to give credit to the artist. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's just more like if you had a rock to the side, somebody could trip over it and then the city's liable, I think yeah. is what Josh is saying. So we may need to think of a way to either embed it in the dirt or next to it or the, yeah. or the, the, uh, the piece of art itself. So I, I was thinking of something more like a big boulder, if there's a boulder included in the landscaping. But um, anyhow, that's it's that'll be for the public works to help us with. <laughs> yes. Thank goodness for public works. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, creative endeavor grant application revisions. Um, Jennifer was working on this. Josh, did you hear anything? And Jennifer is excused. She had a, a, a need for a sudden trip out of state. So that's why she's not with us today. Yeah, I didn't hear anything more from Jennifer about it. The, at our last meeting, she was going to bring a proposed revised application to, to this right. meeting. So I'm assuming we're just gonna have to defer this till the next meeting when she can bring what she has. That, that's that's fine with me. Um, any any qu comments on that from anyone? Okay. Um, okay, Arts Commission work plan. Um, and uh, Josh, will, can we defer to your guidance on this? Well, uh, uh, Charlie, I don't know if you saw Josh, I'm sorry. I sent out a, a sheet with our goals on it. Oh. That was an early version of our sheet uh, of the cultural element, not an earlier version. It was our final version, but it got reworked to put into the city document. Oh, good. So Josh can probably share that with you. It's our five yeah. goals. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I just, I don't know if you saw the mail, but unfortunately I have to jump off at 1030 for a meeting with our book distributor because we have to argue. And so um, I, but I, will, I, I plan on being back. Um, so I will, I will plan on uh, coming back, but I do have to jump off in a few minutes. But I did send this out um, and I thought it'd be a good place for us to start, Charlie. Good. Thank you. Perfect. Huh. And I think, you know, if if I can give a little prelude, is that okay, Charlie, before I hop? I, I, I think um, the number one is to look at creative economic vitality and, and ways that we can um, support other, uh, you know, support that in the city. Um, but I mean, all the goals are important, but I think we need to, number one, like some of the things we're already doing, like public, the public art piece we just talked about, and also the grants or our Endeavor grants certainly speak to a lot of these goals. I, I think the point of this, of thinking about this, beginning to think about this is number one, we talked about last time to meet, to have a plan to meet with uh, the mayor and city council to get in front of them and um, and just have a discussion with them about some of the things we're thinking um, and also get feedback from them. But I also think it's, it's the potential to look at some of the projects we might want to add to the mix, like exploring um, the Mace, the Masonic, uh, is it called the Masonic Temple or Masonic Center? Lodge. 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 Okay, thank you. Um, there's some grant uh, state grants that help could help support with that. There's also um, Charlie and I both both saw this from the Washington State Arts Commission, um, but they've just instituted a new events grant, um, and that's certainly great for um, certainly great for things like the Peninsula Art Arts uh, Festival and and other things that are already happening, but is there something we might wanna um, engage and support with a partner um, along those lines and apply for one of those grants? Um, you know, so there's a few, a few different things um, in terms of also engagement. Um, we have engagement with our cultural endeavor grants in education, but um, are there other ways that we can engage? Um, in, in education in a community? Do we want to sponsor some sort of, uh, you know, um, some sort of classes or lectures, um, which we, we have 
supported class lectures in the past, but do we want to try to do a lecture? I mean, we have a beautiful place for like watercolor classes or something along those lines where, and we have a huge amount of expertise we can draw through throughout the state. Um, do we want to bring in the poet laureate of the state to do something in Gig Harbor? Um, and then also, are there ways we can partner in cultural and heritage? So I just wanted to throw out a few ideas, of course, before I jumped off. I will be back, but I think you can see uh, this is really brainstorming yeah. and looking at a way to, to advance and move our engagement in the community forward. So um, before I jump, any questions about what I just said and just spit it out very quickly? <laughs> Sorry about that. No, I, uh, these are wonderful ideas. Thank you, Robin. Okay. This, this, this is a time when it would be so beneficial if we could meet in person and have a big whiteboard that we can just put ideas on and stream sort of stream of consciousness talk. It's very, uh, it, it's kind of cumbersome to try to do it on a Zoom meeting, but. Well, Zoom has a digital whiteboard now, actually. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's tried it yet, but. Um. <laughs> But I'm gonna, I need to hop. I will be back, um, but I'm sure the ideas will flow and Josh will capture them. And I'll, I'll see you in a bit. Sorry, I have to do this, but got to go. Okay. Bye. That's okay. Bye. Good, good luck. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, um, oh, we have, uh, uh, I will uh, welcome Matt Keogh, uh, Parks Administrator, to our meeting. Um, Hello, Matt. Well, I see him. I see his. Not there's his face. Yeah. Hi there. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Hello. Glad to be with you. You've come at a um, at a very interesting, good time because we're talking about a um, a work plan, right? And just brainstorming. So um, feel free to uh, jump in with you have if you have ideas as well. Thank you very much. So, uh, commissioners, any uh, any thoughts on uh, or comments on Robin's um, good thought starters? Charlie, before we get too far into this, have I showed have, have we talked about the uh, the city strategic plan in our arts commission meeting? I, some of you may be familiar with, it, but I don't know if we have ever brought it up in the arts commission we, meeting. We have not. Okay. That might let be me, a good idea. Let me show you that real quick, just to kind of just to kind of start things off on what. I kind of think the work plan should be, but hang on, let me okay. switch my screen here. And council council worked for several weeks on. In fact, yeah, Josh, so didn't they actually have like a, a a full day session with a facilitator on this? They, yeah, they had a retreat, which kind of kicked this process off, and then they worked on on this actual document over a couple of study sessions. So, yeah, okay. So when we're talking about a work plan, I'm not thinking of anything this complex for the Arts Commission, but I just wanted to show you what Council has for its strategic plan, and I that's it's a lot of words and. Uh, so it's not going to be really easy to read just thrown up here on the screen like this, but um, there's two, the, the first two columns over here on the left are the priorities and goals that council has. And these are kind of the nebulous things that, that don't really have any defined action. They're just, you know, kind of council's statement of what they want to do and, and their general philosophy on things. Um, I think the arts commission has that now in the arts and culture element. So these, these two columns, I guess I can't really highlight them. But these first two columns, I think, are kind of summarized for your group and your arts and culture element. Okay. Um, so I think your work plan should focus on, on actions, like what are the actual things that the commission wants to accomplish? What do you, what do you want to do? What do you want to spend your time working on? Um, so when you're working on a work plan, I think we should focus on those kind of things that we can say, these are tasks we want to do. These are things we can check off when we've done them. These are these are actual things to do. Um, so, mm -hmm. and I don't know, I, I, I mean, I've read through your arts and culture element and I'm familiar with it, but I don't know how to translate that into actual working projects. And that's, that's, what, I, that's what we need from you as commissioners to decide, you know, how do you translate that into things that you're actually going to, to spend your time working on? Mm -hmm. um, 
So I just wanted to show you this as an example. Your work plan won't look like this. Um, your work plan should be just like a sheet of paper that has a, a list of, of items that you want to do. Um, nothing too detailed or intricate, just some really you know broad basic goals of, of things you want to be working on for the next year or so. Uh, I will point out on councils, if I can find it, there are a couple of um, allusions to the Arts Commission. Um, so on the, the third priority, maintain small town character. Um, they have a checkbox here for maintain, expand support for Arts Commission and Arts in the City, and then continue to fund creative endeavor grants. Mm, so just great. for example, that's where the Arts Commission shows up in Council's uh, strategic plan. Mm. Wow, Th thank you for pointing that out, Josh. As many times as I've read over this, um, the council strategic plan, and maybe it's because there's so many words. Yeah. I have not noticed those. So thank you for pointing those yeah. out. Yeah. So, yeah, the Arts Commission is in there. They, they definitely nod to the Arts Commission, and there's even a, a kind of a general support for expanding and, and you know, kind of increasing your role. Um, but it doesn't go beyond that. So, right. that, that is kind of your job to do with your work plan. What, what do you want to? What, what do you want to accomplish? Yeah, good, good. <laughs> Whoa, this is big. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think, Josh, I think your and um, Robin's suggestion of just using our, um, um, our hard fought creative um, element, arts element, arts and culture element as sort of a starting point is a good one. Um, so can you pull up? Yeah, let me put, I'll put Robin's. Of, yeah, that Robin said. Back up. Yeah, so one, the, go ahead. Oh, so, one thing that kind of came to mind to me when Robin was talking about uh, you know, lectures and, and poetry and watercolor, and it was, it sounded kind of like it, it could be along the lines of a humanities festival, like a humanities festival weekend with different venues, with maybe the at the museum having a lecture on something and and having a watercolor, you know, workshop for families at an, at another one. And if and I'm not certain if we're looking for new events that we could promote or if we're looking more at specific, you know, art installations. But in terms of events, humanities festival could cover a, a wide, you know range of poetry and literature and it, it would be something a little bit different and it might be kind of interesting for all ages. Hmm. Could have a music element, you know, as well as the as artistic you know, element. Hmm. That's really fun because it could also be in the fall, winter months. Oh, sure. Yeah. Indoors. Yeah. That's fun. Right. And it could it could even um, brain chatter be not just one weekend, but like an ongoing thing, like um, the humanities huh. festival, the season huh. of festivals, so that maybe one weekend is a is a concert, a music concert, another weekend is a dance performance, another weekend is a poetry reading, mm -hmm. um, or, or and, and I, the, what came, this was spurred from Lynn's comment about the dark winter months and you know doing something to keep people to celebrate our creative spirits um, at a time when uh, the light is not so bright. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and I, I can see that what you're talking about, Sonia, is something that's not so much a festival. When I think of a festival, I think of a day or a weekend where everything's mm -hmm. packed into that one time frame. But but it, you know, like humanities Washington, that it's a series <clears throat> throughout the whole year, right? It's like a series of various um, themed projects. So there could be a, you know, Gig Harbor Humanities series that's maybe once a month or once a quarter or something like that. Right. Right. It just, it also made me think of it though, when you were talking about the state of Washington having grants available mm -hmm. for events. And I thought if it were if it were a weekend or if we, if it was started as an event that possibly might be something that would qualify to get some sort of a state grant to help promote the humanities fest. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Mm. The, and this also has um, just wonderful possibilities for cross-pollination, partnering with other organizations, uh, the History Museum, um, a couple of the, the music organizations, um, the Art League for visual art. There are many um, really hardly known at all arts organizations in town, um, very just small that um, would, that have suffered tremendously through not being able to perform or do what they normally do for the last two years because of COVID protocols um, that, that need some spotlight. And this would be a wonderful opportunity for us as arts commissioners um, arts and culture commissioners to um, to support them and and give give some visibility to them as well. So that's that's a wonderful idea, and that goes under uh, probably the first one, right? Creating an environment in which artistic and cultural activities flour flourish. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, also, yeah, goal three, education, engagement. Yeah. Right. Cool. So, um, Josh, did you write that one down? I did. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so when we're talking about events and festivals and things like that, um, the Arts Commission can definitely have a sponsoring role and a partnership role in that, but right. we're going to, like, be generating new events and creating new activities. We need to have somebody that's going to actually, a group that's actually going to do those for us because the Arts Commission isn't, you're not that right. kind of a group. You can't right. stage your own events and right. uh, maybe on a very yeah. limited scope, but not like we're not doing festivals and, and that type of thing. So mm -hmm. right. um, if we can find a partner that, that can that we can work with, that's, that's totally within your scope here, but that, that's just one thing to keep in mind as we talk about this. So, so when we say partner, Josh, do you mean something like um, a, a lecture, for example, or a poetry reading at the History Museum? But the History Museum would... would yeah, so, something the History Museum would, would organize. I mean, okay. really, I mean, we've had, I think we've had this kind of discussion before and how, how the Arts Commission supports it. And that's, mm. that's what the Creative Endeavor Grant process is supposed to be for. It's supposed to be mm. your way to sponsor and partner with these organizations that are that are doing these types of events um right okay hmm. so uh, yeah i'm, I'm not uh, there's probably ways we can expand that um you know other than just asking for more money you know coming up with more formal partnerships for you know real hmm. events and festivals that that we really want to promote and uh, support um but it kind of it kind of all falls in that same pocket of you know this is the city has this much money to provide to support these groups to do this um the arts commission has you know so much scope and influence that they can provide to support these kind of events mm -hmm. does that make sense a little bit or am I... yeah i guess <laughs> yeah th thanks for clarifying that yeah, yeah. But, you know, like, Sonia, I, something like, well, of course, it reminds me of Humanities Washington mm -hmm. through, throughout the year. I wonder if, if like, if, if you're interested in contacting Humanities Washington and seeing if they partner with some, any local um, arts commissions or anything like that to, mm -hmm. to create events in various areas. I sure. I, I think, and check with the History Museum too, because I, his, I think the History Museum does partner with Humanities Washington. But also, yeah, the, I mean, we also have to think about then, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? Yeah. Does that mean we're contributing funds, right? Probably, and our just general city sponsorship. So that probably, that means money. <laughs> right. Well, I can see how these, how this whole idea really ties into the creative endeavor grants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I think it's well, worth I just having someone at the Humanities Washington just to yeah. start the conversation. Yeah. Right, just to at least talk to them to see what, you know, what it entails and, and 
to find out if they do have any events that they have in Gig Harbor and what they've done with the History Museum. But I, I could just generally find out just to yeah. have a conversation mm -hmm. with them. Sure. That would be great. Great. Okay. Any other um, ideas on, uh, Josh, I, this is a, since this is just brainstorming, um, is there a way that the Arts Commission can somehow partner or have some visibility at the uh, Summer Sounds at Scanzi and the Movies in the Park? Because both of those activities are artistic activities. You know, music is an artistic act. It's a creative activity, and um, and and what we're trying to say with this sort of the overall theme of our element, our arts and culture element, is that art is more than statues and parks and pictures, nice pictures on the wall. It's dance. It's poetry. It's music. It's visual arts, of course. It's literature. It's all those creative activities, and. Um, it, it has occurred to me often that the music in the park is, that's a creative artistic activity, uh, as are the films. So is there, is there a way that we can, I, I don't know, yeah. somehow. Yeah, I, I, you know, just think, I've never, haven't really thought about that before, but that does seem totally appropriate for the Arts Commission, because okay. that's one of your jobs is to provide recommendations to the mayor on artistic endeavors in the city. And that's definitely one of our most artistic endeavors that we uh, undergo. I don't know what the process is for like how the artists are selected or, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really know how that happens. Um, but I think that's something that we could get on, you know, to one of your future agendas to just have Laura or a tourism director just come and talk to you about what she's doing and get your input on things. And um, yeah, and then I, I don't think it would be difficult to, acknowledge that the events are you know sponsored by the arts commission or um, sure. you know that you're affiliated with them because you probably should be is isn't isn't uh uh is, is one of those events sponsored by the downtown waterfront association or are they both in the they, marketing the events have multiple sponsors i don't know uh. Okay. Downtown Waterfront Alliance is a sponsor Alliance. or a partner. I don't know that they give us money for them. Um, there, okay. We have some other companies or organizations that actually uh, do the sponsoring. Of oh, okay. Got it. I don't okay. know who they are off the top of my head, though. I think they're a, there's a bank or a real estate company or yeah. like right. you know, commercial businesses that um, I think St. Anthony's has. Yeah, before. St. Anthony's. Yeah, right. Okay but they're um, organized by the city. Okay. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Another one, another possible um, collaboration kind of along those same lines is the city just had their, the Maritime Festival, which is sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce. And that's in, in some, in many ways, a kind of a cultural celebration, especially with the blessing of the fleet. And did it, did anybody, brave the weather to go to that this weekend? Mm -hmm. I was there both days. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I worked the information booth on Saturday. Cool. And one, th one thing that I noticed was, it, and uh, my husband, Corey, was in a couple of, of the musical groups. So I was there to listen to those. And then I participated in the ceremonial band on Sunday before the blessing of the fleet. Uh, but there was not, um, cross information from other groups. And so as I was sitting at the Chamber of Commerce information booth, there was one older woman who stopped by and told me that she had just moved to Gig Harbor and she was not computer savvy. So she wasn't gonna try to be, you know, getting the, the code for her computer. And were there other summer events? So I found myself kind of, I'm like, well, I, they're gonna do films in the park, but I was uncertain about the dates. And I'm like, there's outdoor music, there's a farmer's market but there was no information at the booth about other things going on. And I know most people use their phones and computers, but there are some people, and, and maybe it would have been good to have it there just to bring it to their attention to say, here are other activities that Big Harbor is promoting. Because I, I did notice that there was really no, no cross selling at all. Yeah, the, so the Maritime Gig event is not a city event. We're not affiliated with it really. Um, 
really much of any capacity. They do a special event permit through us and we do traffic control for them as part of their okay. permit. Um, yeah. I think in past years, we may have been a little bit more involved, but uh, this year we basically had no involvement with it. Um, that's the chamber, right? Yeah, the, the, cham the chamber right. is the, the, the host for that event. Do they do all the organizing and that? So um, probably wouldn't be room for the Arts Commission to get too involved in, in what they're doing. But um, mm. we could ask if they want to come to an Arts Commission meeting as they're planning and, and see if you have any input. But. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk with um, Miriam about that. Miriam yeah. is the um, executive director of the chamber. So, so I'm going to, I'll put that on my list. She um, was a real workhorse. She was there from early in the morning till you know mm. late at night, and then the next day again. And yeah, she 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 was busy, and they did a nice job, I thought, with the event of staffing right. it. And, you know, it was it was good. Right, 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 right. Um, and, and along those same lines of not having a um, like a calendar of events of, available, um, <clears throat> I will toot my horn just for a second. Because I and I'll send you all this link if you haven't seen it. But I did a story for Gig Harbor Life of all the events that I could think of that were coming back after having been canceled for two years, including the Gig Fest, including the um, Youth Symphony and Harbor Winds and the Peninsula um, Orchestra. Um, so um, I, I will send you that link because it's gotten a lot of, um, uh, we've gotten a lot of light, um, hits from it. Oh, good. Yeah, you know, we've got our orchestra concert on Saturday. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, and, and I want you to be sure and talk about that when we come to commissioner comments, okay? All right. Josh, can I put up something on the screen? Yeah. I hope you can see just a list of special events that are largely at Scancy Park. Look at that. And our Scancy Park is active this summer with Summer Sounds, as you're well familiar. And these are the names of the, they're, they, they're listed on Tuesdays as you look down the list. Quite a few groups coming, including the Beatniks and a, a band that plays off of uh, the Beatles. Um, but notice too that we do not have movies in the park located at Scancy Park. Right. It's going to Shamel Park in coordination with Penn Met. So there is another schedule of movies in the park and it's something we're coordinating. I don't actually have that list. And I would bet, I'm pretty sure that we have hard copy handouts of all this stuff at the visitor center at Scansy House and the visitors, the Chamber of Commerce Visitor Center. I'm pretty sure Laura has already put out materials for, for these events, so. Right. If we do, if you do come across people that aren't computer savvy, one of those two locations should have you know, okay. actual handouts. That right, right, right. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen those go out, but I don't, don't know for sure. Maybe you all could inform me. There's something on the list for PALS Arts Festival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what that is. Maybe you do. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you want right. to know right now? Yeah, please. Just if you don't mind. Um, you were talking um, about arts festivals so I, and looking for partners, and I thought this might be yeah. relevant. We, we happen to have with us the president of the Peninsula Art League. Oh, great. So, Colette, do you want to respond to Matt about that? I'd love to, but I don't think you guys can hear me. Yes, we oh, can. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can you? Okay. I was having trouble with my audio earlier. Yeah, Matt, this is, uh, so Peninsula Art League has been around for 40 odd years and uh, has been doing the festival for, I think, over 20. It's wow. a two-day festival and it's on Judson Street. We have, I think this year, 102 vendors. Oh there'll be food trucks. There'll be a literary corner for children. Um, uh, let's see, what else? I think that, and no music this year, but um, but it's it's been very, very successful in the past. Of course, we had to, you know, we didn't do it in the last two years, but I think that we anticipate, Charlie, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of visitors. Right, um, yeah. Uh, to the Gig Harbor area, we've made arrangements to, um, 
to get discounts for hotels and such, um, all kinds of artisans. So if you haven't had a chance to go down and, and uh, enjoy the festival, bring your family down. I think it would be fun. Thank you. Does that answer your question? It does, thank you. Okay. Okay. And there's, there's a free shuttle because parking is, as you know, um, pretty much non-existent during yeah. festival weekends downtown. So there's a shuttle from the, um, the parking lot across from the park and ride up on Kimball Drive. I think it's called, a, I think it's a medical center and there will be a free shuttle between that parking lot and Judson Street running every 10 or 15 minutes throughout the entire weekend. And I also uh, failed to mention that uh, during the festival, there's an, a member, a Peninsula Art League member art show, and it's at Timberland Bank. Timberland Bank is one of our big supporters as long, along with the city of Gig Harbor. And um, so that is, that is kind of an, of interest, just to go in and look at member art on display, and that's all for sale as well. Right, yeah. And um, the city of Gig Harbor is, this year is a, is a huge supporter. Mm -hmm. um, Pal actually got an LTAC grant, lodging tax grant from the city to support the festival. Um, and um, actually there are four arts commissioners that are members of Peninsula Art League. Lynn Stevenson has also been working on the festival and um, Robin Avni is also a Pal member. So um, PAL is well represented on the Arts Commission. Yes, and we just got a Creative Endeavor grant too. That's for our open jury show right. that takes place at the Harbor History Museum. That'll be in September this year. Right, yeah. I, I still think you should have a little music there, but maybe next year. Yeah, well, I wasn't stuff. in charge of that <laughs> portion of the, of the planning. There is a whole cadre of very talented people who are putting the festival together. Sure. And I'm just kind of new to the scene, but um, sure. they were hoping for music, but for some reason that didn't come about. But if you, you know, strolling minstrels or something would work. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're usually, Sonia, there usually is music. Um, hmm. This year, because there's a big question mark uh, of the status of um, that parking lot just above Judson Street, where Seven Seas Brewery used to be. Right. Um, we used to have, Pal used to have the food trucks and a music stage up in that area. And because there's um, that whole shop, much of that shopping center area um, is in the process of permitting to make some major changes. Um, that the status of that parking lot um, has just been so unclear that we mm -hmm. we couldn't figure out another place to put music. Sure. To put a music stage. So, because it has to be flat, there has to be power nearby. And <clears throat> as you know, um, uh, but strolling musicians would be wonderful. I thought we should have a bagpiper, but that idea got <laughs> shot down. <laughs> So thank you very much for the explanation. I hope that I didn't interrupt and in that no. much and that it might help you in your consideration of a work plan, that it looks like something you're really appreciating, but you partner with somebody or an organization a lot of you are part of to pull it off. Yeah, great. No, no that's Matt. a very good point. Thank you. Hey, Matt, Matt, mm -hmm. can you come from the dates you had down there for the PAL Art Fest? The days down there is 7-16, so July 16th and July 17th. Is that correct? Those are correct. Yeah. Okay. 16th. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Saturday and Sunday. 16th, 16th and 17th, right? right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I know that because I'm volunteering for that. But. <laughs> when <laughs> I saw it on it. your when I saw it on your spreadsheet, I was like, is that, is that right? I just wanted to confirm that. Okay. Right, thank you. <laughs> great. Great, great. Okay. Um, moving and, along on our um, <clears throat> work plan. Um, Josh, can we put the um, culture element, arts and culture element back up? Sure, hold on. To guide us. Find it again here. An another thing that we've done in the past <clears throat> that I think we might have on our work plan or our 
budget for this year. Um, we've, we have um, sponsored workshops that have been um, publicly accessible. Um, one of the most popular has been one called Making Friends with the Media. Um, and we've not partnered, but kind of cross-pollinated with the Chamber and the Waterfront Alliance um, because the, the information in this particular workshop, Making Friends with the Media, is important not just to artists who want to promote their work and their events, but also to small businesses that want to promote themselves. And basically, it's just been a panel of um, media people, editors from newspapers, um, the uh, station manager from KGHP Radio. Uh, we had a representative of a TV station in the past. And they simply talk about how do you write a press release? How do you get the attention of the media to help you promote your event or your business or whatever? And I think we have a small budget in our um, budget this year to resume those. Uh, they're always free. They're at the Civic Center. Um, we don't even pay a, a, a promote a presenter. I mean, um, but we do buy cookies and and punch or cookies and coffee. So that that's kind of another educational um, education and engagement goal three thing that we have done in the past. <clears throat> Um, public art and community, are any other ideas for the goal number one, creative and economic vitality? Um, I had, so, hey Josh, did you get the couple links I sent you for that one idea? Uh, yes, that's I was the, gonna, the B guy. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know, is, the, I, is this the right time to bring up that idea? <laughs> Um, yeah, well, I have the links. I can, I can share those. Um, I don't know what the idea is exactly. Yeah. Um, I was recently read about this artist who, um, I think he's from New York, but he's on a mission to promote the message of saving the bees and also, you know, coming to, so here's his website, uh, the good of the hive. And he goes all over the country, maybe even different parts of the world, but definitely all over the country and paints these murals that promote the message of, you know, <clears throat> coming together as communities to preserve nature. And his goal is to paint, I think, oh my God, 50,000 bees. Um, Oh, hey, Josh, can you show us the video? One of those, I think the first link I sent is a video. Yeah, let me pull that up. Sorry, I've got way too many screens open right now. Uh huh. <clears throat> Why doesn't every home in the U.S. have solar panels? That's sad. The reason is not about sunlight. Okay, is the audio coming through? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's actually just yeah. because most people don't know about the new Biden policy that allows homeowners to get paid to install the new solar technology. People just assume they have to spend thousands of... Okay, let me know if you can't hear this. I think my art brings a global issue right to people's feet on a local level. Willie, who became fascinated with honeybees more than a decade ago, has committed to hand painting a staggering number, 50,000, representing a healthy, thriving hive. Every mural stands alone as a visual, but it's only a brush stroke in the bigger picture of what I'm creating. It won't be complete until I've done the 50,000. And I'm only at 5,400 now. And while he's always painted, spending 10 years as a muralist for the NBA, creating art for restaurants and businesses, today Willie's mission is to promote planetary health through his work, hoping these images painted around the country will foster curiosity and change. 
these have unique behaviors. They are democracy, a real one. It's based on the health of the hive, not just the health of the individual bee. Honeybees move pollen from one plant to another, helping to produce the fruits, vegetables, and seeds that make up the global food supply. But what's most impressive, what he says, is how they bring people together. The first mural I set out to do was in LaBelle, Florida. It was on that job where I was like, okay, there's something happening here. I'd see a 16-year-old girl with tattoos and a nose ring talking to an 85-year-old completely conservative farmer. They're both nodding and pointing. I really thought that is something that I can take further than just this one mural. And he has. Over the last five years, Willie's project, The Good of the Hive, has blossomed into 27 installations. Many of the murals fundraised by the communities where they live. My job is to keep going. It's going to take me approximately 20 years. And that, to me, is an arc of change. <laughs> love that <laughs> so the idea is that you know we could be a part of this this guy's mission to create 50,000 uh, honeybees and also um, I mean I'm a huge fan of creating art and installations that have a message something meaningful to them and so I wanted to propose this, I don't know, that we kind of lure this guy here. Um, I think it's, it's totally in line with what uh, Laura Pettit was talking about in the marketing department, attracting tourism, creating a mural or whatever it is, um, um, and bringing um, that kind of meaning to it. You know, I love that idea. So Lynn, kind of building on that idea, um, I've often thought about, because some of those towns have such great um, mural work on old buildings, and um, but what about reaching out to a local artist who might do something similar mm -hmm. and that way keeping it more gig harbor centric or Washington artist? Yeah, I, that actually did kind of occur to me i i mean i personally i'm just thinking out loud now mm -hmm. i'm personally not a fan of taking this one guy's global idea and then kind of making it our own on our own level because his idea is global like his idea or it is national and we would be one part of a national mission right mm -hmm. um i i'm all for a local artist making, creating art that has a message and a mission, but I don't know if I would go, oh yeah, let's find a local artist that can paint honeybees, you know? Oh no, I wouldn't, I didn't mean yeah. that. I, I, if we'd either be a part of his, you know, okay. however many he said, Got it. Okay. or we would simply we have something there. along the same line, some, okay. some sort of cultural awareness um, that mm -hmm. is in art, that is indicative of this area. Yeah, well, kind of like the artists and I, oh God, what's the local artist that just did the Ukraine? Um, That's oh, a right. wonderful piece. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What's her name? That was very organic. It was very spontaneous. It was very heartfelt and it was it's meaningful mm -hmm. and and all that. Um, what's her name? Heather? I can't no. think of it, yeah. I, ah, I, I, well. Rachel. Oh, there's, oh, there's your video. <laughs> it's on the top of my... It looks it, even better now that it's been painted over after it was vandalized. If you can believe it's just, that, it's such a better story. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, right. Um, but oh, um, we are. Fun, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, our our <laughs> practice has, I think, typically been supporting local artists. I'm all for it. This could be a this could be a variation of that and a good addition to our community collection by tapping into this national um, message that at the end of, at the end of his quest for, to paint 50,000, we, Gig Harbor will be a part of that, you know, Gig Harbor mm -hmm. will be on his site and will be, you know, there might be people out there who are his super groupies who want to travel to all these places and see, see the honeybee um, hot, uh, art in person, or, you know, it yeah. could create its own sense its own kind of tourist attraction. 
Right. It would be newsworthy since he's he's out there doing that. And it makes me think about like all the master gardeners that volunteer over at, at Semmel <laughs> in the garden there. And if you kind of think of, of beautiful gardens as kind of artistic too, there could be a tie-in with local gardeners or maybe, you know, the way people like to give away the Mason <laughs> Bee houses and, and mm. you could have some sort of a tie-in with gardens and, yeah. and keep local that way. Hmm. I think this is definitely a candidate for Laura's, for that mural, the, that um, Hilaire Jack Isaacson, Hilaire Isaacson is oh, the yeah. um, Hillary. woman who painted the, right. um, or Hillary, I'm sorry, Hillary Isaacson, uh, who painted the right. um, Ukraine mural twice. <clears throat> uh, but that space is the space that Laura um, Pettit, the city's marketing and tourism director, has kind of designated as a mural for photo ops, for tourism promotion and so forth. And it seems like, Lynn, you're right, that would be a perfect uh, tie-in with Laura's mural. Well, and I don't mean necessarily for that particular uh, location. I mean, it could be anywhere. I mean, we would have to go on kind of a search for what would be the appropriate uh, wall or space i mean my god I even when we were talking about the sidewalk i thought oh i wonder if we could contact this guy and see if he wants to do a proposal for our 10 foot of sidewalk you know <laughs> i i don't know if what that's like to when you paint on a sidewalk and how you preserve it but i also think that i sort of got past that because i feel like his mission um deserves a larger canvas or site it could be downtown gig harbor or it could be uh gig harbor north or it could be <clears throat> anywhere that um I, I, that uh you know we decide is appropriate for something like that that could be a long-term mural location the community maybe the community garden over on on rosedale <sighs> where is that it's on Rosedale. Oh Will yeah, yeah. Is I don't know if there's an actual uh, mural appropriate kind of wall. Yep. Is there? There's a building. building. There's a is little it, building there. Is there? Oh, is it his what building? Is there? Yeah, it's like a. It's not a greenhouse. It, I think they do have a greenhouse, but it's more where they store all their tools during the non gardening season. And is that city property? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we don't know. We, it, we would just have to discuss the options and um, probably it take until- But I appreciate you guys thinking about art and parks. I think it would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Hi guys, so, I'm back. So this hi. is to me in art and parks. Is that like <clears throat> kind of little art events in parks? Oh, well, that's a great suggestion too, but it was just a discussion at the moment about murals and finding spaces for them. Oh, okay. That's well, great. Rob, Rob and I, um, I came across a story about this artist from New York. His name is um, Matthew Willie, I think. And he he's on a mission to promote the message about saving the honeybees and also uh, bringing communities together in support of the messaging and uh, he he is determined to paint 50,000 honeybees and um, you'll have to actually jo I don't know if Josh if you want to pull anything up but send Robin those the video I had we just watched a, a short news clip about him and uh, he's got a website that's called uh, yeah, I think it's called the good of the hive Okay, I'll look it up. You don't, I don't so, want to have to repeat stuff that everybody already right. heard. So he about. works with communities all over the country that come together to, to uh, collect the funding and to um, hire him, attract him to create a mural that um, promotes the message that honeybees are basically endangered, you know, not officially, I guess, yet, but how much we rely on honeybees and um, how much it's important to work together to save them. Okay, great. I will look that up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, so sorry to just jump back in, but I'm here, so I don't want to interrupt. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Sounds like you've been brainstorming while I've been gone. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so oh, anyway, we were just saying, you know, that it's it's also in line with what Laura from the marketing department was talking about in the sense of creating a space that is a, a destination for people to visit and take pictures and, you know, um, talk about, <laughs> promote gig harbor tourism. Well, I like the idea of in the parks as well, as Matthew was saying, because it could be other topics, right? Like, I mean... Philadelphia is known for its murals um, projects all over um, my my hometown, and they did it in a way they, you know, it's also, it could be a heritage project, it could be, um, you know, a variety of different projects, so um, that's, that's certainly uh, um, something to look into. I'm excited about that idea, so. Yeah, good. So murals goes on our um, our list of potential work plan projects as well. Yeah. Well, this guy, this guy, he does murals, and I think um, destination art is yeah, just to state the obvious. It's more than just murals. But. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Wonderful. Um, Josh, you want to bring up the um, Ele our element again. Robin, that was such a good idea to just use our arts and culture element as our guidepost. Oh, well, good. Well, this is why we wrote it. So let's, let's make it work for us. Yeah, no um, kidding. Um, I, I have an idea I'd like to throw out. Maybe you already threw it out. Um, are you still under public arts? Is that what you were, is that where this came up? Mm -hmm. We're kind of jumping around, but yeah, go ahead. Well, tell me if you've already done this, but I would like to look at doing, you know, um, some under education and engagement, some cultural and some arts uh, experiences in, in Gig Harbor and partnering. My goal is I'd like to see us start to partner more than just the um, grants that we give out but to partner around some ideas for, uh, you know, um, writing workshops or painting workshops or photography workshops, any of those things. Um, I think there's a lot of different things that we could do. I was looking into this years ago um, for some projects I was doing. And, and it doesn't have to be like, for instance, I happen to know the person who is the Seahawks photographer. I worked with him at the Seattle Times years ago, and now he is their photographer and the Sounders photographer, and he could come down in the fall and do, you know, I'm you know, making this up as I go along, but he could come down the fall and do a workshop on sports photography with in, in coordination with the parks um, that is a way to so people can photograph their kids and learn more about sports photography right so if if we did something like that where we had just some community partnership I think that would get a good response um, and um, I think you know so something like that is is really good. I know we have the writing in the harbor through T Tacoma Community College. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if next year we can look at there's a piece that we do as an arts commission that's part of that, right? That that we mm -hmm. do something in partnership with Tacoma Community College um, that we bring down the poet laureate of the state, which we've talked about doing before. But I think that there's, you know, now that uh, it was we did something online, I believe, but now um, the good news is, is on the State Arts Commission with the budget, we were able to actually increase the salary for the Poet Laureate. So it was actually like a living wage for the year that they have to do it. So, um, so we also have an opportunity to do, you know, some other things. I think poetry, I think there's a way to tie something else into that. Sometimes poetry itself is not a big draw, but to partner with that, um, with say, um, you know, some storytelling might be um, a good workshop that's, that we could do with say next year, the, the 
writing in the harbor event. So I'm just looking also for ways of partnership. Uh, what do people think about this, like something like the sports photography to partner with uh, parks and recreation? I mean, that's something we could just see if we could put together for the fall. I'd be willing to try. Any thoughts on that? I like that idea. I think it goes, you know, we do have in our budget, um, uh, uh, one of our one of our goals in our budget is to resume our work, our um, workshops, like our making friends with the media workshop. And so this could be part of that. We might also be able to, um, uh, maybe there'd be a way that we could partner with the sports organizations at the school district. Yeah. Um, that, um, you know, because everybody, I mean, how many kids play football or basketball? Well, that's what I'm saying, soccer or, yeah. you know. And there are probably parents that would like to know how to take better pictures of their kid or classmates that want to take better pictures of their well, kid. I'd, I'd want to keep it with adults because okay. then you have, then we can, yeah. there's all sorts of rules around image taking and stuff. And, oh, true. And, you know, um, but it's definitely, um, there are programs that we could partner with. Um, a former arts commissioner does one out of Tacoma for photography for kids. We could see if we, could, Samantha does that mm -hmm. or was part of that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, um, and I do think that there's, we can support it, but there's also a, there's also a charge involved because you have to cover some other costs too. And also when people pay for something, they show up. And when they don't pay for something, you get a higher attrition rate. So we want to make sure, you know, we're, we're covering costs appropriately um, as well and guaranteeing people to show up. Um, but anyway, I, if anybody else has any comments, either you know share them or send them to me. But that was one idea I had. Cool. Um, well, we we had a similar discussion while you were gone, and uh, Sonia brought up um, uh, like humanities festival kind of thing. Yes, event. yes. We combining humanities, but um, Josh reminded us that we we as an organ as a commission really not in the business of organizing events like that we can partner and sponsor help sponsor but well that's what i want to say par part that's why i say partner but yeah we can be in the business of initiating events like that <laughs> right. Yeah. right and that's i see as our role is yeah. is initiation and working and going to the schools and saying hey what do you think of this idea <laughs> and we'll help you know um Etc. So yeah, I think initiation is our role with that. Mm -hmm. But we and we could do a lot of initiation if we so desire. The, the way that I kind of look at this is as arts commissioners, I think that you all are empowered as individuals to go out and and when you have ideas like this to explore this with other groups and organizations like the community college or the school district and say, hey, what do you think of this kind of idea? And maybe the arts commission can help and support it. Um, the one thing we have as a city, and I know our budget process is complicated and confusing and, and doesn't make a lot of sense at times, but um, we, have the, we have the budget that you have for Creative Endeavors grants, but we always, I don't want to say we have a blank check, but we always have opportunity to spend more money on projects. So if there are partnerships out there that are you know a higher level than maybe some of our Creative Endeavor grants that the Arts Commission really wants the city to support, we can always go to council and say, hey, we have this opportunity we'd like to support this financially. Um, and we can ask council to do that. And that's, we have the money in the budget to do that. It's not specifically mm -hmm. spelled out in your in your arts commission budget that you have this money available to you, but we can go to council and ask, you know, can we support that? And that's something that's a lot easier for us to do than to um, try to create our own workshop series or mm -hmm. create our own right. programming because that involves staff time that we don't frankly have very right. much uh, right. that type of thing. Um, that makes total sense. And I like the idea. That's why I like the idea of the partnerships as well. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, um, that's great, Josh. Thank you. That, that's, that's your mandate in the municipal code is to go out and find ways to partner with the community on promoting arts. So um, 
the second part of this discussion that that we're kind of veering towards and i'm hearing a little bit and matt can probably talk about this a little bit is um there's a lot of things that we're talking about that will kind of venture into the area of parks programming and the city does not have parks programming we don't we don't do basically really anything for parks programming i know we've had discussions internally about should we get into that game and is that a possibility for us in the future and you know what would that look like um so and i don't know where we're at in this conversation but that could be part of your work plan going forward is working with the city in its attempts to develop parks programming and having an arts commission input in how that process plays out um i don't know if it's the direction we are going to go but i think if we did decide to start exploring that that'd probably be something that you as a commission would be involved in uh, Matt may have other thoughts on that, but and I don't know that we've even really talked about it much more than just conversations exploring it. But yeah, thanks, Josh, for bringing it up again. Um, I think activating our parks is definitely of interest, and providing more cultural re opportunities for people is definitely in line with things I've heard at the council and at the park commission level. I um, I think it's. It is a big question to say, will we do any programming? But if we find others who are ready to do programming, I see no obstacle to that and would encourage it, especially the arts. And I'm not trying to flatter you folks, but people have recreation opportunities through Penn Met right now. And um, I think our cultural almost landscape of our parks really suggest a good venue for art. Yeah, so Matt, could you, I was actually wondering what is the, I'm confused by the relationship, between, or I don't understand. I shouldn't say confused because I have not a clue as yeah. to the relationship between Penn Met and the parks and how that works. And is there a resource I can go to to understand what is a city park, the mm. Harbor Park, versus what is a Penn Met park? Yeah, let me be your resource. And I certainly okay. will get, we'll <laughs> certainly get you a map of our parks and they're the ones that are in our incorporated areas. And it's true that properties outside the city, mostly if they're recreation, they're mostly associated with Penn Met, though there are private recreational spaces and fields. Samuel Park is Penn Met's uh, flagship park, right? Okay. So you're probably aware that they have turf <laughs> baseball fields and pickleball courts and so forth. Um, I won't spend much time here, but I'll just point out that they are a taxing district outside of city, uh, city limits. So they do not tax city residents. They collect funds to provide what you could call regional recreation, but they always have the opportunity to put their taxpayers first. And when they build a facility like a community center, which is planned, um, there will probably be fees associated with residents and non-residents of their tax district. We do not have any standing uh, that I'm aware of standing agreements with PennMet. We just have a promise to always do our best not to um, I guess you could say Interfere. duplicate and to uh, get in the operational issues of each other. So there's a respect between the two organizations, but there's no coordination. We will build C Cushman Trail together. The city has done the portions of Cushman Trail largely through the city. There's still a little bit north of Borgen Boulevard to do, but the rest will be in Penn Met territory. So there are projects that we will partner to see through okay that's helpful so a question are do you have any net sheds under your well net sheds are city property there are several yes okay but it's not it's not under my purview as much as the city property okay. they do have historic restrictions as you probably know so at ansich park and scancy park we have two and i don't think i called a net shed at Eden boat but there are facilities related okay but can you would they be available to hold um, workshops at? Yes, in fact, in fact, I'm glad you asked because there's a great opportunity coming at Eden Boat Park property. Um, many of you probably know that the brick house there, historic house has been renovated by the city and it will soon become open for reservations for people to have small classes and workshops there. And we're really hoping that we can find, I'm not pointing at the Arts Commission, but we could find community members who would really help organize that since it's not a call to the city. The Ed and Boat shop is going to be actually in charge of reservations, but 50% of the days of the year need to be for public um, opera, public opportunity. Okay, so chills, 
can we put that on our list to say that this is something we need to explore, work with parks and see what how we might be able to leverage this new wonderful opportunity. I know it's been, I mean, right by our new roundabout art. Yes. Um, <laughs> but um, is that something we could do, um, Matt? And to say, let's, let's talk more about that? Yes, please. Okay. It is, uh, as you know, it's a beautiful setting in historic. And um, I think you, I think people would really enjoy being able to go out on the pier that's there. They could be in the grass and overlooking the estuary. There's quite a bit of opportunity. The building itself has a small deck. Um, yeah, um, I think, I, I mean, I also know that they want to use that for events as well, but, um, but I think I'd like to have have more discussion on this because I, I can see of a few things that we could look to see if we could make happen through mm -hmm. parks there. That would be great. Yeah, and I'm not going to keep on about that, but I will say, since you asked me first about Penn Met, Penn Met does rent our facility up here at the Civic Center. They mostly do that for public meetings, but I understand that over the years they have asked to put on classes in our building because we have community rooms here. So just keep in mind that the Civic Center is a public resource. It does come with rentals, but the city could be the sponsor. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Although not exactly as inspiring as the uh, being on the water, but thank you. <laughs> good, good. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Matt. You're always such a great resource for, um, for ideas and, and information. Well, everybody on city staff is, so thank you. Um, we are at 1130. Um, let's continue this uh, brainstorming session. Any other ideas? We're, we've kind of been focusing just on our first um, goal. Um, are there any other ideas on that one? It, creating creating um, artistic and cultural opportunities. and economic vitality. Well, I think we've done a lot of good, we have a lot of good ideas on that one. Um, public art and community design. Um, a, many of our ideas I think are touching on multiple goals of our um, arts and culture element. Um, creating landmarks and cultural points of references. Certainly our net sheds are landmarks and points of reference, um, developing um, creative public spaces. Um, I have a question since I still am think relatively new and to the to Gig Harbor and enamored by our net sheds is I'm sure there's a book that has the history of the net sheds in it, but is there anything that's accessible to people who visit about the net sheds themselves, like that's not a book. Um, meaning, yes, there is. There is okay. Yeah, I, can, I don't mind. There's, off there's a little ball. brochure but there along is. the waterfront brochure, and all the net sheds are identified in it. Okay, you can see that in there, but cool. and and very, includes... very accessible about the net sheds, and it highlights Scancy um, net shed first, but it actually has a picture and inventory of all of them. And there has been evaluation of these buildings for historic purposes and the city's designated um, some of the area as of cult historic national significance. Okay. All right, well, that's good to know. Yeah. Where can I get that at City Hall? That's where I got it. <laughs> no, the, uh, the Welcome Center down there has it too. Right. Okay. Um, the Visitor Center. Okay. I have um, to say I've never been in the visitor center. Oh and yeah, I, down at the Harbor Wild Watch. Harbor Wild Watch yeah. Just and, I, and I think it also might be in that um, at, at the um, uh, Chamber of Commerce. I think they might have a copy of it also. Okay. And I know the downtown city organization. What is that? They might. Waterfront Alliance. Yeah, they might have something too. I would imagine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's a, a, a real rich history. Very special places. And I think you're very wise to think about special places in Gig Harbor. 
Yeah, I just think that there's a lot that we could leverage or that we could, they are very special places and they have a magical quality about them. And I think that they're perfect for cultural and artistic activities. So uh, you can see my brain, um, you know, flickering um, that I think that there's some potential there that I'll, I'll ponder a little more and do some research on um, what other cities might do. Not that they have net sheds, but along those lines with special areas. Well, down there um, at Ansich Park, there are cities in the process of um, evolving the home port. The, the what do they call it? the home port for our local fishing fleet that does not currently have a home in Ingate Harbor. So that I mean they've been talking about that for maybe ten years. But but uh, Josh will confirm. I just got an email about the permits being um, submitted to the city. So it's happening. The you know we're going to have an extension of the. Dock I saw deck. an orange sign up there, so I wondered what. Yeah, that there's going to be a dock that built specifically for the fleet. You know, some of the fleet, not the whole fleet, but I don't know how many boats, fishing boats, that can fit in there. Probably, maybe not a lot, but it'll be a big, impressive, grand presence of the fishing fleet at the Ansich net shed right there. And the, you know, the, with the whole, it's a. There's already a lot going on in that park, but I thought I'd mention it because that's part of the expansion of that park is bringing our fishing fleet, you know, um, together right there. And maybe there's an opportunity for right. us. Yeah, and great. The Maritime Pier is also a designated pier for the commercial fishing fleet, but it has taken, um, the, the, the fishermen have kind of taken um, second place uh, in line behind private boats that want to use the Maritime Pier to moor. So yeah, the Ansich, the Ansich net shed is going to be, um, that's going to be a big project. I think that the permit is asking for six floats, if I'm, mm. if I'm remembering right. Um, yeah, we're watching that really carefully. Uh, I, I'd also like to interject that um, in addition to the very rich cultural history that our commercial fishermen, um, uh, the place, the important cultural place that our commercial fishing fleet has in Gig Harbor's history, um, I don't want us to lose sight of the fact that there was also a native presence here long, long before our commercial fisher fishermen mm -hmm. arrived. And um, there is precious little in the city that acknowledges that. Um, we're going to be um, really blessed with a marvelous sculpture that's going to be installed, I think later this year, um, that play, pays, that honors the first people, the Squabach uh, band of the Puyallup tribe. But that's the only thing that, um, that's really publicly going to acknowledge the, the fact that uh, the tribal people were here first. And um, I, I think that if the Arts Commission can find ways to acknowledge and honor the, the original peoples that were here, um, I think that can be an important part of our mission. Well, I think that's a really good point, Charlie. And I think actually we'd have a great partner <laughs> Um, with the tribe itself, because they, aside from wanting to do this and spread the education and the heritage lessons, they also have an obligation to spend back in and give to, uh, or, you know, organizations and uh, in order because of um, it's part of their wrapped up in their gambling licensing. So I think not only, I guess what I'm saying is there's not only a viable and a, and a good interest and a, um, but there's also potential funding and partnership there, so. Right, yeah. Um, and, and I well, think, uh, that, go ahead, Lynn. So, uh, you know, the city is, I think, still in the process of acquiring a couple large um, parcels or collection of parcels up there off of um, Burnham, right? Uh, and, 
I believe that the Puyallup tribe is involved in helping to fund that. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that then will send, will be will that become part of the city parks? Uh, Matt's question for Math Matthew. Will that is that going to become a city park or is it like preserved? The Some other primary designated? function is conservation. Um, it's conservation, yeah. Yeah, and conservation falls into our open space and our open spaces that we own that should be accessible to the public, including for passive recreation. That means hiking. Um, that is managed between parks and public works. So we have open space parcels beyond that, but those are pretty exciting ones. They're in the historic area right down on the water, close to the waterfront mm. and, and very important to the tribe. You're right that they're involved yeah. and partnering with us. I, is it appropriate to like ask the tribe? Like what, I, I mean, rather than us kind of making some decisions, to, I mean, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Ask them like, what would you guys? What What are your thoughts? What would you what like? What can we help you do to? You know, is there something you would like to? You know. Yeah. Let I mean, kind of start there and see yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is that's this is this is really we're just trying to gather ideas to gather more feedback, basically. Yeah. Right. And, right. But Lynn, I think it was already referenced, but the statue that's coming, the honoring statue at Austin Park, also the Tualatin Estuary, as it's also named. Um, that statue is a great example of coordination. It's coordination beyond just one or two contacts at the city. It's high level coordination. And that mm -hmm. was a joint project. And so I think you have a model yeah. in place. It's not like you, mm -hmm. we haven't asked and we haven't coordinated. I think the focus mm -hmm. will be on that statue for the next two months because we're waiting for mm -hmm. it to actually be placed <laughs> with a ceremony. But I think it's the start, and it's also something to realize you're right. not reinventing, you're not reinventing a wheel. Right. I well, thank God because that project took seven or eight years already. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think it would be interesting to say, hey, what what else are your are your thoughts? Yeah, and hopefully that's created a like a framework, right, to maybe make it a little bit easier in the future. But yeah, hey, now that we have this honoring symbol, what are you? Do you have any other thoughts? What do you think? Like, what could we maybe pick up? Uh, from the tribe as ideas. Well, I could see actually just I'll throw this out there, like something like working with a peninsula as a hands-on art, and working with the tribe to create a lesson around that around that statue. That cool. you know, that's and, well, you know, something like that where we're helping to kind of facilitate um, something that will touch a lot of school children, right? Yeah. So. Um, oh, I'd yeah. love it if some of the, if the, I mean, oh God, I don't know if this is out of bounds, but like if some of some tribal members would be willing to, you know, educate like down there on site or. I think that's great. So, you know, that's, that's like one little thing yeah. that, a nugget that we can that's work cool. on, that we can work on, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And well, speaking of hands on art, right? They could get one of their videos could be just re a recording of something. Yes, okay, definitely. that's great. Yeah, great, Robin. Yeah. Cool. I, I, I was on this. I was on the citizens, or I, I am on the citizens, citizens committee that um, facilitated that honoring statue, uh, our fisherman, our guardian. Um, and then, and I was also the um, sort of the city represent, re representative on that committee as, as an arts commissioner. Um, and you're right, Lynn, it took, um, at least it's at least five years, probably six now that we've been working on that. And to know that it's, um, it's actually happening and it's actually gonna be installed this year is absolutely thrilling. Um, and I'm happy to, um, and, and I also agree that it's, um, it's very important that the tribe lead any efforts that we have Absolutely, yeah. um, in developing any kind of programming or uh, any of these ideas. Um, it, it's not our place to be dictating to the tribe. The tribe is a government. They are, an app, they are a governmental entity, um, like a state or like the federal government. Um, they're their own government. And so a government to government um, relationship is a good place to start. 
And we've already established that with the honoring symbol, the um, our fisherman, our guardian. Well, so, I'm, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead, Charlie. I'm sorry. No, I'm fine. That's fine, Robin. Well, what I was going to say is what I see of these things and what we're doing here is, and I will, I will volunteer to do this by the next meeting. Um, I'll take Josh's notes of the stuff I missed, but, um, but um, or the, listen to the transcript and. I think come up with a few ideas that we would like to see how we would partner. So this idea, you know, I would write just an abstract par or a paragraph that says, here's something we would like to see how we can facilitate and get feedback on. And I think that there are a few things that, that are, you know, um, I hate the expression low hanging fruit, but for right now, I can't think of anything <laughs> that I can substitute with that because um, I've been zipping back and forth between meetings. So so the idea is that there's a few things that, that we can put into action right away, um, you know, working with Matthew and the city on some things. And, we'll, and then there's a few more long-term things like an arts community center or a cultural arts center, right. those type of things, right? And I think that if we can come up with a list, that's all really what we want to do is this is an idea list and we want to get feedback. So I'm I'm happy to craft those and send it out to everybody for we can review next time. Um, and then that will be our basis for a meeting with with the city, with the mayor, the city council, Matt, you know. Um, all of that. So does that sound like a good idea? It sounds like a terrific idea. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we all know writing is something, well, Charlie, you do it too, but <laughs> pulling together this type of stuff, I don't know, I seem to have a knack for it. So yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll run with it. <laughs> right. and, and you have you have such a great ability to focus <laughs> and, um, whereas some of us, one whose tongue I can bite kind of goes all over, <laughs> takes all these wonderful little paths it's, to see where it's going. all, it's all good. Everything <laughs> ends up in the, in, in somehow in there. Um, Great. Okay. Excellent. Um, so do we, with spaces and places, I'm wondering if there's anywhere that we feel that like, it's great that we're going to be part of the roundabout, that beautiful project, um, which is very high visibility. Is there anything else coming up that we need to be aware of? I know that, um, Lynn, you have said for your uh, the tree snags to keep an eye out in the parks. Um, mm -hmm. So there's that. But as, And I also think whatever is, what's the current fate of the sports complex? Um, is there anything, <laughs> there's, there's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, because, well, there's certainly an opportunity if it happens for a mural there. Um, but mm -hmm. there, um, regarding the sports complex, there are some open houses coming for the city's portion of what's called phase one. And that Porsche, that built, they will be taking some feedback on design of that space and public areas. I know that in the scope of work, they've been asked to make sure that it's representative of Gig Harbor. Um, there's something about sense of place in the design that's intended. Um, I would recommend, I would suggest that that open house would be a good place to be able to assert. So I don't know, I forgive me the architectural terms, but the vernacular, the roof lines, the kinds of things that might uh, matter to people and how they identify a Gig, gig Harbor. Um, mm -hmm. That could include art, but it's um, definitely sense of place is intended to be designed in the design. Well, sense right. of place, yeah, that's great. And sense of place can include art. I mean, a great example of a sense of place is the, um, there's a, uh, there were handcrafted handles on the, the courthouse in downtown Seattle mm -hmm. that um, were quite beautiful, that were, uh, I think they were like the, the valences of justice or something. Um, I'm not remembering correctly, but there are architectural ways that are also artistic um, mm -hmm. to incorporate into a sense of place. So it, other than us trying to track that, because I'm lousy at it, is there a way to for Josh, for you to notify us when that is? Is that too much trouble, Josh? Or should I be more diligent in reading the 
for the open house for the yeah. sports complex. Um, yeah, well, I can let you know when when that gets set up. Um, it, Josh, there is a date for it. I is just, there a date I, already? Yeah, I, I wish I had it right on my fingertips. I'm I've not seen anything announced on it yet. Okay. The, um, the planning we'll commission. The planning uh, commission has just had a couple of open houses. Uh, planning commission. They have. I think, I think so. They've just had a couple of open houses. On the sports complex. I think. Probably not the sports. I don't. Complex. I don't think. No. Oh, oh no no no! I'm I'm confused. That's been uh, on the um, um oh the uh, B and Bs. Ah uh, right. So I want right. you know when the open house is, but as yeah. far as the arts commission is concerned, you you guys should have at least your own bite at that. So I will yeah. I will coordinate it's, with Aaron and find out what the plan is for that, and and find out what the arts commission's involvement right. is going to be in. Um, the yeah. open house is probably not the appropriate place for you guys to weigh in. You'll have your own shot at what you want to see. Yeah, so they would come to a meeting or something. Yeah, yeah they'll come to a meeting and talk, basically like the Harvard View Stinson roundabout, where they'll get your get you yeah, involved in in the way that they need to get good. you. Good. Yeah. Are they have they allotted? Do we know a percentage for art, like one percent for art, or I? I kind of yeah. don't think so, but I don't know for sure. Yes, yes, Jeff. I think Jeff gave us. Um, well, we have made it clear um, to Public Works that we want art to be included in that whole sports they, complex yes, budget. They know that's that, that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know we've made that, sense, but I also think it's good just to like there are different ways that it can be incorporated. Like, yep. You know, um, it doesn't just have to be a statue. Um, right. It can be other things. You know. Yeah. I don't know if we have any great gig harbor sports stars other than well the olympic crewer but um uh but but i think there are other ways to maybe uh look at that um we did a similar we were involved in a similar project for city hall for bellevue when i was on the bellevue arts commission and we did a beautiful mosaic and not i'm saying for that this would be uh for this project, but one of the things we did in the new city hall was a beautiful mosaic floor that had some historical reference to Bel the city of Bellevue. And I was the same mosaic artist who did the, at the um, at Safeco Field or whatever it's called now, that did the uh, Mariner's compass there. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there are ways to incorporate things um, that uh maybe might be a little fun for yeah, us other right. than just a statue so. yeah and the city the city did that when the when the new city hall was built yeah um, there are several pieces um the countertops in the planning department are gla carved glass that depict um, a number of the historic purse mm -hmm. from the fishing fleet um mm -hmm. there's the compass in the sidewalk outside the um, in the sidewalk outside City Hall, and of course there's the mural, um, the stainless steel mural, right? Um, Harbor Landings mm. uh, in the foyer of City Hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so all, I, that I'll talk yeah, about. All great examples, Charlie, and I think that's it's good. It's now's the time for us to kind of get inv all of us to get involved. So let's any information about the sports complex. I'll put it on my Google search. So I might or just read Gig Harbor News. <laughs> let me wrap something up for you guys because I know your time's limited. I got to go soon. But I believe the open house, not that that's where Josh was directing you, but that's for the public. And that should be on the 28th at 5 p.m. at the city center. Is that um, a live in person? Yes, open house, 5 p.m. live. Um, and then you asked about upcoming projects. I, I know uh, it was referenced once, but I was very excited to hear you be aware of the Masonic Lodge, which is located at City Park, also known as Crescent Creek Park. And I would like you to know that we will have, I have an architect as part of a larger scope who will be evaluating the building for public assembly. And also then looking at what are the ideal programs that would fit that building in relations to the park. It's not officially in the park, obviously. It's just been purchased right on the edge of it. But we will be considering it. And that'll the, the architect's feasibility and program possibilities will be under discussion starting this fall. 
Oh my oh. gosh, Matt, can we be part of that? Yes. Or have a representative from I, the art? I think on your work plan, you should have the Masonic Lodge or something like that on your work plan. Okay, great. Yeah, we've, that's, that's great news. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's exciting. And we definitely want to be involved in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm happy to be the Arts Commission representative, at least one Arts Commission representative on that discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And likewise for myself too, Charlie. Can we hold hands? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, we're almost at time. So um, the, sounds like we got a lot done here. I, I think we have. We've certainly talked a lot, but we have long lists, I think. <laughs> That's great. Um, well, before we leave, if no one minds, um, can we leave the work plan now and then revisit it at the next meeting with Robin's uh, yes. synopsis? Okay. Uh, commissioners, reports and comments. Um, I will say that, um, uh, the Gig Harbor Band is going to, the Gig Harbor Band Boosters um, are one of our... Um, actually something came up on my day, so I was going to call the cast anyway. Am I? Am I? <laughs> okay. Um, what do you have available? We hear background noise for somebody. I don't no. know. Oh, it's, it's me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my husband just picked up the phone yeah <laughs> oh, okay okay um the gig harbor band boosters are one of our creative endeavor grant recipients and the uh final concert of the band um the final jazz concert of the band is tonight at seven o'clock at gig harbor high school in the auditorium and their final complete band concert and also their wind ensemble is tomorrow night at seven o'clock at the Gig Harbor High School Auditorium. Um, I'm planning to go to tomorrow nights at least and uh, any others that are in town that would like to attend because our money supported this, um, please feel free to join me. And I'm giving three cheers uh, to the band because they've been able to put together a fairly normal season uh, in spite of all the confused um, protocols of COVID that linger. Um, but these kids are doing a tremendous job and uh, deserve our support. So um, join me if you can in attending the jazz concert tonight and the full band and, and winds concert tomorrow night. And Sonia, you want to talk about Sure. Then, uh, the Gig Harbor Orchestra has a performance on Saturday night at uh, Lighthouse Christian at seven o'clock. And so it's our first concert for, you know, since uh, two years ago. So we're, we're excited about it. We're uh, kind of a little rusty on some things, but we're, uh, we're excited about it and it'll be a fun, it'll be a fun concert. Right. And um, did the orchestra play at uh, the, the gig festival? They did not. Um, different groups of Harbor Winds Harbor played. Winds. They had the Dixieland Ensemble. And I know the, uh, I think the Youth Orchestra, the Peninsula Youth Orchestra had a, a set, so they played. Um, but the Gig Harbor Orchestra did not. And, and these are all um, music organizations that have sadly been invisible over the last two years and haven't been able to practice at all. So um, the fact that they're back this year, this is sort of the summer of returns um, right. of so many events and organizations that are able to bring us together again after having to be, having to be a part in that very sad, sad time the last couple of years. So um, let's give them our support and cheer for them. Uh, any other uh, Commissioner comments or reports? Just, I want to forward to uh, the group, Charlie, what you and I just got email on yesterday about uh, the, uh, the grant about events. Um, and uh, Josh, I don't know if that's something we can post on the website or something, I don't know. Um, but uh, I will forward it to everybody and uh, um, take a look at it. It's just an opportunity 
uh, for funding for events in the city. So right, and uh, Sonia, the the orchestra and uh, the Harbor Winds um, ensemble could possibly qualify for these grants. They're primarily, as I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Robin, but primarily to help organizations that have had to cancel events and so their income has been significantly curtailed over the past two years. Oh, okay, oh, that's good to keep in mind. All right. Yeah, I'll forward that to everybody on the loop, on our loop there. Yeah, right. and I've already shared it with Peninsula Art League. Great. And um, Colette, I don't know what the response has been, but... Um, I'll be setting up a Zoom meeting um, probably for before the end of the week, I'd like to, and then we can uh, brainstorm because we'll definitely um, be taking advantage of that Robin, or, you know, putting our hat in the ring anyway, to see if we're eligible. We lost membership. We, uh, we forego, you know, what forwent membership fees for the year, um, canceled two summer festivals um, and our summer festival definitely, I think, comes under the description of that yeah. type of event. Yeah. Great. Charlie and I both thought of the Peninsula Art League and I'm yeah. uh, at the same time really, Charlie's like, great minds, but um, <laughs> I actually, I'll have to renew my membership. I'm sorry. I didn't renew it. I'll renew it. Oh, <laughs> oh I gave no. you, I already gave you credit as being a member. Yes, Robin, yes. That's you better. You better. <laughs> Okay, I promise this week. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I do think there's opportunity there. And I also think for just as an aside, some of the things we were talking about earlier, that there's an opportunity to partner with Peninsula Art League on some other things as well. Um, because I've heard some of the lectures, you know, when I would, when we had the in-person meetings. There's mm -hmm. illustrators who we had, there's some uh, potters, some really wonderful opportunity there. Um, to potentially do something, so. Absolutely, the, the breadth of artists is incredible and mind boggling when you see some of the art that they do. It's just yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, anything else from anyone, Dan, <laughs> anything? Oh, yes, Lynn. Yeah, uh, the Harbor Arbor Art app, um, Call for Artists is out there somewhere. Um, I wanted to verify with Josh, did, did you pass that along to Laura in marketing and ask her to announce it, blast it, gigabyte it, whatever? Um, I, I haven't seen it personally in any, you know, public marketing format. So I'm not aware of if, if the word's gotten out through the city. Let me check with Laura on that again. Um, I know it's a very niche announcement, so I don't know if she's blasted it out everywhere since there's only probably a handful of people that could actually fill out an application. Yeah. Um, let me talk to her about it and see where it's okay. from. I know it's on the city's website and I think you all have the link to it, correct? Yeah. I've sent it's it out just, to you, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, so it's just, yeah. But between yeah. all of you, we should pretty much know who would be eligible to apply for something like this. So hopefully we've gotten it into all of the all of their hands. Um, but I'll talk to Laura again and see if she, something mm -hmm. that she thinks should should go out to yeah. the but, whole okay. public. I, I sent it to the to the um, Tacoma Listserv, and I also sent it to the um, to Peninsula Art League. Um, and I think it's going to go in the. June newsletter for the Peninsula Art League that's coming out this week. So, um, yeah, but if anybody has other people that they know about that could be not necessarily carvers, but yeah, right. In any any artist that could embellish those two stumps in any way, um, uh, let's spread the love. Yeah, and I think it's a good idea for it to go out through the marketing department for, to the general public as well. First, because you never know who's gonna go, oh, I know somebody that, that could do something really cool with that. But also it it helps put the word out that we even have a Harbor Arbor Art. That probably 99% of the Gig Harbor community really doesn't know about. So mm -hmm. it's just another little mention publicly um, of the existence of the Harbor Arbor Art, you know, project. Right. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Any other um, 
Commissioner comments? Okay, our next meeting is Wednesday, July 6th. And I assume that'll be another Zoom meeting. Is that right, Josh? Most likely, yep. Okay. And actually that should be July 13th or second Wednesday. Oh, okay, I was looking at the agenda, sorry. Yep. Typo on my phone. July. Okay, yeah, July, July 13th, my apologies. Um, okay, if there's no other business, um, May I have a motion to adjourn? I motion to adjourn. I'll second. 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 Okay. Thank you all so much. Um, we'll see you next month if we don't see you at one of the orchestra concerts or the band concerts or orchestra concert on Saturday. Right. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you.